In this quick tutorial, I'll show you four examples on how to solve first degree equations. The question reads, solve the following first degree equations. We'll start with A. The equation that we have in A is minus 3 plus x is equal to 12 minus 4x. The goal here is to isolate for the x variable. Also keep in mind that first degree equations are linear equations. So every question will have at maximum one solution. To isolate for x, I'm going to bring this term over to this side and this 12 over to this side. Notice that by doing that, all of the constants will be on one side and all of the letter terms will be dedicated to the other side. So by bringing this over, I end up with negative 3. And notice how this is positive. It becomes minus 12. And similarly, I'll be taking this over where I end up with that negative 4, which was already there, minus x this positive x became minus x. By all means, you could have taken all of the letter terms to the left side and dedicated the right side to the number terms. At the end, you're still gonna get the same answer. The left side becomes minus 15, and the right side becomes minus 5x. To isolate for this x right now, we need to get rid of this negative five. Now, unlike before, this negative five is actually being multiplied to the x. So you can't simply take it over and then switch the sign. Instead, you have to divide both sides by negative 5. And by doing that, the negative 5 up here and the negative 5 down there cancel out, where you're left with x is equal to negative 15 over negative 5, which is equal to positive 3. And that's the solution to A. Let's move on to B. In question B, the equation is 9z is equal to negative 2z plus 7. This equation contains three terms, so it's a little bit easier than the previous one. All I have to do is take this negative two over to this side, to the left side, and by doing that, the symbol, the negative, becomes positive. So I end up with nine z, that stayed exactly the way it is, plus two z is equal to positive seven. That also stayed on the right side. Now, of course, you could have placed this two z in front of the 9z. The order doesn't count. So had you done this, 2z plus 9z is equal to 7, you'd still end up with the same answer. So let's combine these two terms together. We end up with 11z is equal to 7. And to isolate for this z, we divide both sides by 11, where we end up with z is equal to 7 over 11. Let's move on to question C. In this question, one of our terms contains a fraction. Now, when you have a fraction in an equation, it tends to make the solving process a little more involved. Your primary goal when you see a fraction in an equation that's solvable is to somehow get rid of that fraction. So how can we get rid of this fraction that's contained in this term? Well, what you have to do in the technique is that you find the lowest common multiple among all of the denominators. Now this has a denominator of three, this term has a denominator of one, and so does this term. Every number can be represented over one. So the lowest common multiple here is simply three. And if you don't know how to find the lowest common multiple, all you do is multiply the denominators together. So three times one times one is three. So to get rid of this fraction, we will have to multiply this whole thing by three. And here's what I mean by that. You're going to take this three, and you're going to multiply it to this term, you're going to multiply it to this term, and by multiplying this three to this term, that three disappears. Let's start off by multiplying three times a over three. Three times a over three is the same thing as saying three a over three, which leads you to simply a. Now, if you still can't visualize that, pretend you were multiplying three times a over three. This three, which has a one underneath, would multiply like this. Three times a is three a, and one times three is three. These would cancel out, leading you with this solution. Three times negative eight is negative 24, and three times six a is equal to 18 a. Now, all we have to do is solve for a. I'm gonna bring all the a terms to one side, so I'm gonna take this over, and I end up with negative 24 is equal to 18a minus a. The right side equals 17a. The left side stays the way it is. And therefore, a is equal to 
negative 24 over 17. That is the solution to this question. Finally, let's move on to part D. In part D, they are asking us to solve for x, but this time we have two terms that contain fractions. Now we're going to use the same technique as above. I'm going to find the lowest common multiple or any common multiple, and I'm going to multiply all the denominators to do that. So 4 times 2 times 1. That gives me 8. So I'm going to multiply this whole thing by 8. Let's see what happens when you multiply this whole thing by 8. Well, first, let's multiply 8 to this term. And if I do that, I end up with 8 times x minus 2 over 4. I'm not going to cancel anything out yet. So let's multiply this 8 now to this term. 8 times 2x minus 4 over 2. And lastly, 8 times negative 6 gives me negative 48. Notice that this 8 was a pretty good choice because 8 divided by 4 gives me 2. And 8 divided by 2 gives me 4. So now I have a pretty simple equation. Take a look. 2 times x minus 2 is equal to 4 times 2x minus 4 minus 48. Notice we have no more fractions, and that's exactly what we wanted. Now I'm going to expand this whole thing. 2x minus 4 is equal to 8x minus 16 minus 48. This and this term are alike, and these three terms are alike. So I'm going to move this over, and I'm going to move this over. We end up with 2x minus 8x is equal to negative 16 minus 48 minus 4. To simplify the left side, I end up with negative 6x. And on the right side, I end up with, well, everything's negative. So negative 16 minus 48 is 64 minus 4 is 68. Isolating for x, I divide both sides by negative 6. And let's use our calculator for this. 68 divided by 6. Notice how I'm not including the negatives. I don't need to because I know they're going to cancel out. And I end up with 34 over 3. And that is the solution to part D. So there you have it. That is how to solve first degree equations. If you found this tutorial helpful, please support our channel by subscribing or by liking this video. If you have any further questions, visit our website at studyforce.com. We're an online service for students seeking free homework help. See you soon.